Hey guys, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here. Check this out. When the Nevada Gigafactory went operational, there was a lot of yield loss from battery production, resulting in wasted raw materials and cells that failed QA, which could not go into Tesla products. Speaking to multiple experts in the field, they all pretty much say the same thing, which is when new battery cell lines go operational, the yield loss is significantly high. So my question is, is this where Redwood Materials comes into play? Not to recycle used cells, but instead help optimize and recycle materials during the manufacturing process, as this will be the time where the new Tesla Roadrunner lines will be most inefficient. To get a deeper insight into this topic, I'm going to ask Jarko Meselzia from American Manganese if this is indeed a possibility. And if you don't know, Sharko specializes in battery recycling, so we may get some interesting answers. But before we begin, I would first like to thank Bradford Ferguson from Holter Ferguson Financial and all the other Patreons that make these episodes possible. So let's get into it. So Sharko, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So I've been looking into battery recycling and what Redwood Materials could be doing with association with Tesla. I've also been talking to my colleague Jordan from The Limiting Factor, and he said something really interesting regarding this topic. Let's have a listen. My view is that generally it takes a good year before you uh, drive up the yield rate on a line where it's at a point where it's uh, actually uh, profitable and efficient. So do you think that there's a chance that Redwood Materials would be recycling Tesla's battery cells at the point of manufacture? Uh, first, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jordan to Limiting Factor. I, I think he makes great videos. Uh, they're in-depth, so keep up the great work. Um, but yeah, you know, I, you know it's, it's plausible. The amount of critical materials of something new that are wasted in the battery cell manufacturing is, is huge. I mean, off-spec material can be up to 30% of a plant's manufacturing capacity. And what I mean by off-specs, this could be either due to uh, material impurities or manufacturing faults, which, which leaves an enormous opportunity to reduce costs. I mean, just, just think about it. You have the extraordinary, extraordinary growth we're seeing in new gigafactories. So you have like, uh, Giga Texas, Giga Berlin, you have the gigafactory in Nevada and China, and, and that's just Tesla alone. I mean, with everybody else, plus all the new lithium ion battery chemistries, I mean, this is just pretty much a melting pot where lab science meets manufacturing design at rates we've never seen, and, and the outcome is not perfect. And, and you know, as for Redwood, Redwood materials, anything is possible, I think, especially with J.B. Strobel having such a close connection to Elon and Tesla. However, Redwood materials have been really quiet with their recycling developments. And just today, Wall Street uh, Journal did a piece on them uh, to give us some insight. So, you know, at first glance, it seems like they're using a high heat process and there seems to be no report on recoveries or quality of the recycled product. Uh, regardless, like I said earlier, there will be an enormous opportunity for recycling and we need all the help we can get in treating EV batteries. But uh, I would also like to say that it does feel good that you know, co-founder of Tesla to, to be able to recognize the opportunity and, and the positive impact in recycling to be able to dedicate his time and resources into this new venture. I mean, it really shows his dedication to advancing sustainability because I'm sure he could be, I mean, easily relaxing on an island right now, especially during these times. Oh, exactly. So can you give us some more depth in terms of how Redwood Materials could save costs for Tesla, especially as well, they're setting up their new production lines? Yeah, well, I mean, just look, look at the complete breakdown of cell manufacturing costs. I mean, it can vary with different chemistries, but really the cathode, which is comprised of varying compositions of lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, and aluminum, that is really what makes up a majority of the cost. So if in your manufacturing process, it's not perfect and you, you mix all these materials together, but then that cell doesn't get used or that material doesn't get used, I mean, it gets wasted. Um, and, and that's a high cost. I and mean, if you can cycle this material back, that's a huge savings. And so let's be conservative and say, you know, 10% of their production capacity is wasted uh, because it's off spec, like we mentioned before. And, and instead of going into a landfill or a smelter, the material can be directly recycled back on site, let's say at a gigafactory, 
into a high quality product that could be seamlessly integrated in the manufacturing process. And therefore you're maximizing your existing critical material by you know, using that wasted lithium, wasted cobalt, wasted nickel, cycling it back. And you're also reducing your reliance on these same raw materials from these new mining operations from different parts of the world. And this is, which I think is a huge cost savings. And you know, I'm sure your viewers are aware of the complex lithium ion battery supply chain including the environmental and ethical dilemmas with mining them. So with recycling, you're improving your triple bottom line, which is profit, people, and planet. I, I mean, it would be ironic for an EV company to source raw materials from dirty and unethical sources, which is why Elon Musk is so adamant about finding a nickel supply with minimal environmental impact. So you, you mentioned manufacturing waste. Can you explain what you're referring to exactly here and what are the processes associated with recovering this material? Yeah, so I mean, when you're making the different components of a lithium ion battery, like your cathode, anode, separators, I mean, there's, there's a, I mean, some of those products are destined to fail uh, just through, you know, quality assurance. So from cathode production waste, um, you know, whatever doesn't meet quality assurance or whether it's trimmings throughout the process or uh, some manufacturing faults, uh, you know, there's an abundance of this material. Um, and as you can see in the picture here, this is in the form of this cathode that we've received it for our pilot plant testing. So what you see essentially is your cathode active material that's adhered to an aluminum foil. So that cathode active material is, is that black stuff. Let's assume, for instance, this cathode has an NMC composition. So there's nickel, manganese, and cobalt, and, and there's lithium in there as well. So therefore, our first step is to take this cathode foil and cathode material and put it into a chemical solution known as a pre-leach. This is where we remove the cathode active material from the aluminum. And so now we have you know, separated aluminum, which is recovered. And now the active material, this is like a black mass, is that, that gets leached into solution, which creates a pregnant leach solution. And that solution is comprised of lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt that came from the uh, NMC cathode active material. Now, First, focusing on the base metals, because through, through our process is that we focus on the base metals and separating them out as whole. So we filter them out of the solution, and in this case it would be a, as a high purity nickel, manganese, cobalt. And then what's left in the solution, once we filter out this cake, this is what we look to integrate back in the manufacturing process. And then what's left in the solution is your lithium compound, which we then extract as a carbon and a hydroxide. This is also high purity material and through these two streams, this is what we look to circulate back into the uh, cell, cell making process. Nice. So maybe we can wrap it up with one battery day prediction. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I love these. I watch all of them on uh, YouTube and checking out different people's predictions. You know, if Tesla does announce their own battery production line on battery day, I speculate that will be for their high performance models such as a Roadster which will come at a high cost and low volume. Then years down the road, they can expand slowly. But until they're able to prove out you know, their battery chemistry and battery production at high volumes, um, I think in the meantime, they'll be using supply from their existing battery partners for their mass produced models. So you know, their suppliers like Panasonic, CATL, and uh, LG Chem. Um, but yeah, those, those, those are my predictions. And I mean, we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, Jarko, really appreciate you coming onto the show and giving us some excellent insights from someone that works in the battery recycling industry. So all I can hope is that we can have another discussion following Battery Day once we get some more news come out. Thank you, and it's always a pleasure to speak with you. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think. Will Redwood Materials even be mentioned during Battery Day? And why are they a separate company from Tesla? This is something that I still haven't been able to work out, so I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Anyways, if you like the content, please consider supporting the show on Patreon, and a huge shout out to Fisher. And just note, all content discussed was our opinion only and not financial advice. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.